we communicate to God, right? It's our phone line to God, right? And so the only way that we can get to know God better and grow in God is actually by doing what? Prayer, right? We also talked about that we were doing a good work last week. We talked about doing a good work and I'm not coming down, right? We talked about Nehemiah and we talked about how Nehemiah was doing the work and Sam Ballard wanted to distract him from doing what God called him to do, right? And so this week we're going to talk about another character in scripture and his name is called Job. In the Bible, it looks like Job. How many of y'all saw Job or Job in the Bible before, right? Okay, the great thing about the book of Job is that it is the oldest canon book that we have, meaning that it was written before the first five books of the Bible, but it's placed in an area. You're like, why is it placed so far back? And it's the first book around it. And in this book, you really it's really very confusing when you look at it. Because when you look at Job, when you go to the very first chapter, you see that he's a perfect and upright guy. You know what I mean? Which, it seems like that's impossible, right? For us to be perfect and upright because we all got issues, right? Or maybe that's just me. Maybe I just got issues. But I got issues. And, you know, so for God to say that Job was a perfect and upright man, that meant that Job was a really great guy, right? And so the devil one day came and was like, hey, the reason that Job is so good is because, God, you got your hand on him. But if you take your hand off of him, I promise you, he'll curse you. He'll quit serving you. He'll quit praising you. And so God said, you can do everything, but you can't take his life. So in the course of Job's life, we see all these different things happen. Number one, a guy come and tell him, Job, there was a, 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 a tornado and it killed all of your children crazy, right? you like, man, I've been serving God. I've been doing what God has called me to do. And all of a sudden, it seems like I've lost everything. How many of you seem like your life has been chaotic at times, right? How many of you ever ask God the question, why? Is that ever me? You know, Job had lost, his wife told him, you should curse God. You should just forget about God. God don't love you. Um, he lost his children. He lost all of his animals. He was a rich guy. He lost all of his friends because his friends were like, you must be sinning or something because God, God only do this to you when you sin because they were really religious. You see what I mean? And so he had lost his friends. He had boils on his body, meaning that he was in total pain. And, and Job had a mindset that he was like, I'm going to question God. I'm going to question God. How many of you have been in a place you want to question God, right? There was a time in my life about four years ago, I lost like a grandmother. She was my great auntie. And I was like, God, why would you take her from me? I was mad at God. And I know y'all never been mad at God before, right? You never had to think, why did God let good, bad people stay alive? And then good people, you know, there, there could have been so many other people. But the thing is, is that God has a plan for our lives, right? Do we all believe that? And God knows better. And a lot of times that's hard to deal with and that's hard to see. Because oftentimes we really don't see what God is doing next in our life. And so, Job, we see Job dealing with this situation. He asked God, he said, God, what, what is the problem, God? What is going on, God? God, why me? Why do I have to go through this, God? God, why do I have to deal with the frustrations of life pressure? And so we see that God asked Job a question, and he was like, Job, where were you when I formed the foundations of the world? Because you bad, you know. I know some, one time I tried to get uppity with my mom, you know. And I was like, Mom, I'm grown now. And, you know, I'm 18. You can't tell me what to do no more. And she was like, boy, I brought you in this world and I'll take you out. And that was not the reaction I was expecting to get from my mom that she was threatening to kill me. You know, but it, it's amazing that God told Joe, where were you when I created the foundations of the world? And, and the thing is that God knows best in our life. Just like our parents. A lot of times they tell us not to do something is because they've been there and they've done that, right? And a lot of times we're like, you old, you always been old. You know, how you, you don't know what it's like to be young. You don't know what it's like to be me and have friends and when I can't go with my friends and what that feel like. But a lot of times they've been where you are. And God knew what Joel was going through, but it was a test. And a lot of times we don't pass the tests that are in our lives. I'm preaching good right now. That's a good word, y'all. A lot of times we don't pass the tests that are in our lives because everything else around us distracts us. I mean, my mom said, I'm going to give you a whooping. I know we don't whoop children no more in this generation, you know, but back in when I was growing up, and it ain't even that long ago, we used to get whoopings. 
And the thing about my mom is that my mom didn't whoop me because she didn't like me. One time my mom told me, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. And I was like, how in the world? Let me take the belt and hit you with it so you can feel the back. How is it going to hurt you more than it's going to hurt me? But the thing that she was saying is that I'm doing it because I love you. And oftentimes in our life, God normally chastises those that he loves. If he didn't care about us, he'll let us just wander off. But he loves us so much. And that was the thing with Job. So Job asked a question, and Job got right back in place and was like, God, whatever your will is, whatever your will is for my life, God, I'm willing to do it. God, whatever your will is for my life, God, I'm willing to accept it. He said, if a man dies, shall he live again? All of my appointed time will I wait until my change comes. That's amazing, right? Do y'all get that? Let me break it down a little bit. He says, if a man dies, shall he live again? Let's, let's deal with that for a minute. Let's dialogue with that. If I die, can I live again? So what Job began to say, he was like, I believe that there's a better life after death. Then we were talking about Paul last week, and he was like, to live is what? Huh? To live is, you know, is Christ, you know? But he's like, to die is what? To gain, right? And so there's a gain because we understand that we're just passing by, right? And we're all going to spend eternity somewhere. Do everybody believe that? I hope everybody believes that, right? We have two locations. It's like A and B. Have you ever been to the Price is Right? Last year, we took the whole church in San Diego up to Price is Right, um, those that wanted to go. We had one of our members win a new car. But the thing about the Price is Right is that when you go on there, you know, you get selection, right? You get to choose. Now, you can choose the right things or you can choose the wrong, right? So they might have a car up there and be like, we want you to guess the price of the vehicle, right? And you could actually get close to it and not get it right and you will lose everything that you have, right? Because there are decisions that we have to make in our lives, right? So when we're going through life pressure, we can say, you know what? I'm through. I want to give up. You know, I don't want to serve God. We can run away from what God has us do. And we know Jonah in Scripture. Everybody knows the story of Jonah, right? Mm -hmm. Jonah got swallowed by a big fish, went down to the bottom. Because he was like, God, I ain't going where you want me to go. I remember those times running from God. Have anybody ever ran from God? Like, God, I'm going to do me, and you do you, God. I want to go here. I don't want to go there, right? Because it's decision. After being in the belly of the fish for three days, he changed his mind. He was like, you know what, God, I think I'd rather do it your way. <laughs> you know, I think I'd rather be fresh air. Could you imagine being in the belly of a fish? Could you imagine all of the raw fish going into the body and all of the seaweed and the smell? And he said it stuck so bad. Could you imagine all of the water coming in there and all of the things from the inside that goes on your body that breaks down food and things? Could you imagine that? Being in the belly of a fish. He said that he felt like it was hell. So after that three days, I mean, I would have been good in an hour. I would have been like, God, I'll go wherever. <laughs> Just take me out of here. After three days, God brought him back up and took him to his purpose, and we know that Jonah went to where God called him to be. And the same thing with this story here dealing with Job, we understand that even though Job had to go through this process, God had better for him. Isn't that hope there? That no matter what it is that you're going through in your life, that there's hope for you. That God has a plan for your life. We hear this all the time. Jesus said that I have a plan for your life. That you will live and not die. I have an expected end for your life. I'm not going to leave you there. I'm not going to let you die where you are. Even though sometimes life gets hard. Because we have challenges, right? Sometimes we don't know how we're going to pay our bills. I know Christian and I've got big money. But I mean, like some of us, you know, we don't know how we're going to pay our bills sometimes. And we worry about it. And Jesus said that the birds have what? Nests. The foxes have holes. But the Son of Man did not even have nowhere to lay his head. It's amazing to me that when Jesus came in the world and he got all the money in the world. You know, he's the creator. He's the greatest innovator that we ever seen. And he came into the world and they didn't even have room in the inn for him. Marriott didn't have room in the hotel for him. Could you imagine Jesus coming to a hotel and they say, Sorry, Jesus, we don't have room for you. We're booked tonight. So he had to be born in a manger. So just imagine that a lot of times. We complain about so many different things today. You know, I, I actually wanted to go with um, Century, um, CenturyLink TV because I was tired of paying high things for cable. So I just turned it off in about, I didn't know it was going to take them 
you know, so many days to come out, especially CenturyLink. It take them 10 days after you make an appointment to come.